indulge me while I share with you the very first story in the very first book I wrote, Light Up Your Life, and it was over 30 years ago, and it still applies now. We create our lives. It was one of those sunny spring days when it feels good to be alive, and I breathed in the fragrant air as I watched Chris jump into her car. Her smile and wave were full of life, and the bump of the baby she was expecting clearly showed under her dress. I could picture the Chris who strode through my gate for her first appointment a year before. She had short, dark, curly hair and a purposeful gait. She walked rigidly without any flow in her body and nodded when she saw me. No trace of a smile. In those days, Chris carried her own personal thundercloud with her and had done so most of her life. She eyed me warily as she sat in the chair in my office. Her voice was tense and sharp as she started to tell me about herself. She told me bitterly that her mother was only interested in clothes and had no affection for her. Her father was always working and interested only in money and success. He was excessively mean and begrudged her the money for college so she left without finishing her course. She wasn't going to feel beholden to him. She didn't have time for their narrow way of life and she hardly ever saw them. As a child, she'd always been different, shy and awkward. At school, she'd been bullied unmercifully and no one seemed to notice or protect her. She'd failed most of her exams, even though she was intelligent because no one encouraged her. She wanted to do something with her life, and here she was, stuck in a dead-end job, working for boring people, and there was nothing she could do about it. Her frustration was enormous. All her life she'd been unlucky. Nothing good came her way. She used to try to please people, but it was no good. They didn't respond, and she felt no one liked her. The only good thing in her life was her boyfriend. They lived together now, and he felt exactly as she did. Life was a grim battle and held nothing for them. They had no money, couldn't even afford a car. Anyway, it wouldn't make any difference if they could, because she didn't have the confidence to drive. She'd never get married, she informed me. It was much too dangerous, and she'd certainly never bring a baby into this terrible world. There was nothing anyone could do, was there? Her eyes said accusing me as she sat back, crossing her arms and glowering. Yet behind the frowning, accusing facade, there was a desperate, fearful appeal. She looked lost and alone. I couldn't help but remember myself in the days when I felt I was a helpless victim of fate. Life seemed so threatening. I took Chris through her life, showing her exactly how she'd made these difficult relationships and events happen. I explained the laws of the universe. Now the laws of the universe are the great laws by which we live. They govern our lives, for we are in a structured universe subject to spiritual laws. By these laws we attract all the people and situations to us. When we understand and apply them, we can take responsibility for ourselves and give our lives direction and purpose. Then we leave the role of helpless victim and our lives transform. Chris accepted and applied the laws and within a year she had a creative job which she loved she and her boyfriend had married and she was expecting a baby. She had healed her relationship with her parents and her father had bought her a car which she had learnt to drive. Her mod body moved with vitality and energy and her face was expressive and alive. Her life was happy and she had the tools and knowledge to keep it that way. People generally are becoming more aware that their structure in the universe 
but are not sure what it is or how to apply it. The more understanding we have, the easier our journey towards wholeness and happiness become. We then no longer allow ourselves to be victim of fate.